You can finally build good looking cross platform mobile app in Python using Flex. Flex is an open source UI framework built on top of Flutter. You know what that means. You can finally write code once and deploy it to iOS, Android, and also the web from one code base. Flex is currently only being used by Python, but is planning to include Go and C Sharp by 2024. The most exciting part is it doesn't require any complex installation process or SDK. Just run pip in Flex and you're ready to go. You build UI in Flex using Flex controls, which is just a fancy name for Flutter widget. Actually, it's a wrapper around Flutter widget. Flex.dev contains excellent documentation for all basic controls for Flutter widgets, like buttons, icon, and texting, as well as 64 others. It also contains advanced features like animation, gesture detection, drag and drop, and a lot more. Let's create a simple flat app. I'll start by creating a virtual environment, then activating it. I'll install flat by running pip install flat. Once that's done, I'll go ahead and create a python file for app.py. I'll import flat as ft. To open our app window, we'll be using a method called .app dot app method takes in a target parameter this target parameter is set to a function which i'll create now then i'll pass in the main function to our target parameter to run our python file we'll be using flex app.py this will help us take advantage of the hot reload feature on file save which means our app interface will automatically update whenever any changes is made so I'll go ahead and create some text control. Text in a value parameter which takes in the text you want to be displayed in your UI. To add any controls to your page, you need to use the page.add method and pass your controls in. On file save, our UI will update, therefore showing us our text. So I'll be using the split screen windows feature so you can see both the interface and my code at the same time. Let's replicate this interface from this image. To create the icons, we'll be using the flex.icon button controls. This control will take in the specific icon you want to use. You can check the documentation for that. We'll pass in the text as the second control and an icon as the third. I made a mistake, the add and remove icons are all capitalized. We save that and we get our icons displayed in our UI. Let's also change our text to a text field control and set the width to 100 pixel. One thing you might notice from our image is that our controls are all placed in a row. To achieve that in flats, we'll be using the container control, more specifically the row container control. The row container control takes in its children and it aligns them in a row rather than column. Now that we got that set up, let's align our controls to the center. The row container control has an alignment parameter which defines how our control will be aligned. We'll set this to the flat.main axis alignment.center which will center our controls. Now that that's aligned in the middle, we can also set the title of our page using page.title then setting it to whatever title we want. Right now our controls are only aligned horizontally. You also have to do it vertically as seen in the picture. We use the page.vertical align attributes to set our alignment of our controls. We'll set it to the flat.main as this alignment.center, which will align our controls vertically to the middle of the page. Now that we've got our UI out of the way, let's start working on the functionality. We want to increment our zero in our text field when we keep, click on the plus and want to decrement it when we click on the minus. Lucky for us, each button has an onclick handler, which is set to a function that will be called when it is clicked. Right in my add function, this is where I'm going to increment the value in our text field by one. Take this value, we return a string, so we'll have to convert that to an integer. So we'll also have to convert our whole result to a string. For any changes to be displayed in our UI, we have to call the page.update function. I don't think it's working. 
oh i think i added it to the minus button rather than the add so i'm just going to switch it we also have to create a minus function with the same code but instead of doing the plus operation we'll be doing the minus operation there you have it your first flat application up and running to open our application in the browser we have to set the view parameter to browser. this will convert our application to a website you can see our app now running on a web browser like a normal website that's it for this video to learn more about flat kindly visit the flat.deb website also don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we'll be making so many projects around flats.